Hello and welcome to the premiere of Onboard, coming to you from the CSULB Players Theater. I'm your host Victor Wright and tonight we're going to be talking about Greek life. No, not this Greek life, this one. While fraternities and sororities account for a relatively small percentage of students here at CSULB, they have a large presence not only within our community, but around the country as well, with over 9 million members nationally. For those who aren't familiar with the social Greek system, here's a quick rundown. Students can rush, and once they are accepted, they become pledges, where they learn about the organization's history and values. At the end of their pledgeship, the new members will attend an initiation ceremony to become fully-fledged members. The blood of virgins is not required, but it is recommended. These are, there are many benefits to joining a Greek letters organization, such as making new friends, networking for your professional career, and raising money for charitable organizations. Many members see it as a great way to spend their college years and continue on with their involvement through alumni organizations. Benefits aside, the system is in need of serious critical reflection from both people on the inside and the outside. Greek life issues include high percentage of alcohol use, lack of diversity in membership, and sexual abuse scandals. You know, just, just an average day at the Fox News studio. This concerns not just CSULB, but colleges across the country. This is a difficult topic to cover simply because the media hasn't done a very good job of calling these organizations out for their mishaps. Between the controversial Daily 49er opinion piece from this spring and the rape on campus story published by Rolling Stone in 2014 that was later retracted for being false, Media condemnations of fraternities and sororities often range from being entirely illogical to the legal definition of slander. This makes it that much harder for those in the Greek system and the community at large to take these issues seriously. To start out, it's important to learn the history of Greek life as a whole to understand the systematic flaws. According to Time Magazine, writer Lisa Wade Fraternities began as organizations where wealthy male elites could shelter themselves from the strict rules and expectations of the 19th century college experience. You know, a recent example of someone sheltering himself is Joel Osteen hiding from the hurricane of poor people in Houston. In 1825, the first social fraternity, the Kappa Alpha Society, was founded on the East Coast. It was made out of the riotous and rebellious behavior of wealthy male college students at the time. Attempts by Ivy League schools to stop the growing trend ended in vain, and as more women were allowed to attend universities, sexual conquests became a priority for these organizations, as well as the protection of their brothers from the moral condemnation of the outside world. So, basically, it's like the mafia, except way less of these guns, and way more of these guns. <laughs> yeah, man, thanks, bro. Yeah, bro. It's my bro there. While today's Greek life seems to be a far cry from its ancestral roots, the same issues can still be seen within the modern fraternity and or sorority. And yes, it is true that Greek life's top governing bodies, such as the IFC and the National Panhellenic Council, have kick-started many campaigns to curb the effects of hazing in their organizations, such as the These Hands Don't Haze campaign. However, from 2005 to 2014, over 60 people died in instances related to fraternities, with only a very small fraction of those deaths being related to hazing incidents proving that the national organizations aren't addressing the other main issues that are plaguing their reputations. Let's not kid ourselves. A big incentive to go to college is the social life, which Greek life promises to fulfill. Schools capitalizing on this tend to heavily market their bustling Greek system to attract incoming freshmen. People who just entered adulthood are naturally inclined to rebel against the rules they had throughout youth, which typically involves getting crunk, you know, except me. I've never done a drop of alcohol, never smoked with the cigarettes, or really been fully nude, ever. Who wants to be my friend? 
This is a real question. However, most Greek organizations take the issue of underage drinking to a dangerous and often illegal level, causing most of the 60 deaths I referenced previously. Now I can sit here and tell you all the statistics that you've already heard before. Four out of five Greek members are binge drinkers, just like my stepfathers. 50% of members felt their school performance suffered because of drinking. The list goes on and on. But it becomes more impactful when you see the victims of this type of substance abuse. Tim Piazza, an engineering student at Penn State, passed away after a night of heavy drinking at the Beta Theta Pi chapter house. He experienced severe injuries and alcohol poisoning, which led to manslaughter charges for the fraternity, later dismissed. Now, it's easy to point at a school a couple thousand miles away and say that something like what happened to Tim Piazza would never happen to people we know here in Long Beach State. But when organizations continually host events that encourage the excessive consumption of alcohol, they run the risk of being liable for someone's death. Another main pillar of Greek life that stuck around is the idea of homogeny. The idea of white supremacy has been particularly evident when investigating Greek organizations nationwide. Not only back when African Americans were banned from attending universities, but even in today's context. There have been many instances of overt racism within the system over the last few years. For example, a UCSD party with the theme Compton Cookout in 2010, a UCLA fraternity event where partygoers came in blackface, and most notably, a University of Oklahoma fraternity that took part in this racist chant in 2015. While these events are sickening, it's important to note that most instances of racism within the social Greek system are subtle. For example, a whistleblower named Melanie Goetz at the University of Alabama in 2013 exposed the stories of several black women who went through sorority rush and were rejected by all 16 Panhellenic organizations on the campus, specifically one young black woman who was salutatorian of her high school class and is the granddaughter of a University of Alabama Board of Trustees member. Mm-mm. Sweet. Home, Alabama, where the sky has more color than you. Even at CSULB, where white students make up only 19% of the student body, Long Beach's newest sorority pledge class Instagram pictures contains seemingly mostly light-skinned women. Now, please note, even though I didn't rush, I still got a bid. Take that, all you losers. These are my sisters now. Mm -hmm. There is an argument to be made that the minority student population simply doesn't want to be in the Greek system. However, we still need to look at the why factor. San Diego State University's paper, The Daily Aztec, reported that out of the students of color they interviewed, many of them felt like they would be unwelcome if they ever went through Rush. When places as diverse as Long Beach or San Diego have a hard time getting people of color to rush, we can see that we have a long way to achieve inclusivity. The most disturbing aspect of Greek life that needs to be addressed immediately is the instances of sexual assault, whether it be at a different school or right in our backyards. Nationally, studies show that fraternity members are three times more likely to commit acts of sexual assault than their non-member counterparts. While technically most rapes take place in college dorm rooms, it's important to remember the small percentage of Greek life members compared to students who dorm nationally. The Jeanette Clary Disclosure Act, passed in 1990, requires violent crimes involving college students to be reported to the entire student body. However, these crimes must fit specific criteria for a mandatory note to be reported. An instance of sexual assault that was reported to the student body took place in 2015, when the Sigma Alpha Epsilon chapter at CSULB was accused of two sexual assaults in one night. After the incident, which wasn't their first, 
their national council, not the university, shut them down for a minimum of four years for ungentlemanly conduct. Shortly after the incident, another assault allegation came forth after a Valentine's Day party at the Kappa Sigma fraternity. Now, no one here at 22S Media is advocating for the complete abolishment of Greek life, except mm, our producers, our director, our head writer, our writing staff, and half the students in the country. Mm -mm -mm, but not me. We are sisters for life, Kappa GDI. Mm -mm. Except you, Kathy. Fuck you. Kathy. But after looking at the institution critically, any reasonable person can come to the conclusion that it's time to change the way the men and women back in the 19th century did business. The parties to the dispute, meaning the national organizations, the local chapters, and the schools they are chartered to, need to reform the dangerous acts that have led to the hurt of numerous people since their foundings, whether moral mental or physical. National organizations need to put rules in place and actually enforce them. And schools need to put their foot down when it comes to illicit behavior from these organizations and protect their current students rather than look out for their marketability for future students. Most importantly, chapters for these groups should not be a form of protection for its members from the consequences of the outside world. In the creeds of nearly all the Panhellenic and IFC-sanctioned organizations, they talk about loving your brothers and sisters and loving the people in your community. And part of truly loving someone is holding them accountable for the things they do wrong. That's our show. Please join us for the next episode. That's our show. Please join us for the next episode of Onboard. Good night.